It's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the crystalline solid state. In a typical X-ray experiment, we have an X-ray source that emits X-rays of a single wavelength towards a sample which can either be a single crystal or a powder. When the X-ray interacts with the sample, the X-rays are scattered creating a diffraction pattern. This diffraction pattern can then be used to elucidate the crystal structure. In order to understand how the diffraction pattern can help us to create a crystal structure, we first need to simplify our model of a crystal lattice from three dimensions to two. We can now see that there is a regular distance between the particles we will term D or R0 as in previous videos. Assuming we have a regular lattice with layer spacing of D, an incident beam will be reflected with equal angles between incident and reflected beam. The X-rays that are incident on the particle are monochromatic. They have the same wavelength. If a signal is to be observed, the X-ray radiation directed at the lattice of a given wavelength will be reflected with the same wavelength. This is called Rayleigh scattering. For a signal to be observed, the waves must interfere constructively. That means that they are in phase and the amplitude is additive as some integer multiple of the wavelengths. If the signals are not in phase, then destructive interference happens, reducing or eliminating the signal entirely. This can happen when the sample is not crystalline. How do we use this information to find lattice spacing, though? Well, if we have two parallel beams, they are identical up to a point A. But the second beam must travel an extra distance of AB plus BC in order to interact with the particle. For there to be constructive interference, this extra distance must be some integer multiple of the wavelength. Since the point A is orthogonal to the incident wave, we can form a triangle between it and a point B, the second layer atom, with D as the hypotenuse. We can then relate these since AB is opposite theta, giving us AB is equal to D sine theta. Because AB is equal to BC, the first equation becomes 2AB n lambda, which we can then substitute into the previous equation in order to obtain Bragg's law as n lambda is equal to 2d sine theta. Let's check comprehension. 